Good morning, folks. We've got a couple space weather items to note, including a big blast that went out 90 degrees away from our planet. Weak solar wind perturbations earlier this morning here at Earth, and we'll hit two papers on the solar influence over the atmosphere. Starting with our star, we look to 193 angstroms to watch the dark coronal hole beginning to depart. That weak CME we had expected appears to have hit earlier this morning, very light impact with no geomagnetic disturbance. Despite small flares on the Earth-facing sunspots, the bigger story came from just out of view on the south. A sunspot group we'll see later this week erupted in large fashion with a long-duration flare and CME event. This one isn't aimed our way, but SOHO shows how powerful that blast was. Likely would not have been a kill shot if it was aimed at us, but still a strong CME. We will be monitoring that group as it turns in here in the coming days, in case it has more eruptive activity. That one off the side, by the way, was aimed at Jupiter. We'll also continue to monitor the Earth-facing sunspots. There are still several of them, and there are enough umbra within some of the groups to warrant flare watch in the coming days as we await that new group on the south. If you didn't catch our second video yesterday, we showed one of the scarier eruptions in the SDO era. Even though it wasn't a major flare energy event, it ejected major plasma. Good blast from the past and information, just in case you weren't around here watching the sun back in 2011. Couple articles today, starting with one that ties centennial climate patterns to long-term cycles on the sun. They say they are even further enhanced by ENSO activity, which we also know is modulated by the sun. It's probably the 200th paper we've seen in the last decade on that long time scale forcing correlation. And we've also got one on the short-term electric field modulation, during geomagnetic storms. This relates to the prompt penetration fields in the equatorward traveling waves, how the sun's energy might prefer to come in near the auroral region at the poles, but how it impacts every part of the atmosphere through electric connections. It's papers like this one that will eventually be combined with global electric circuit understanding to help them mechanistically explain the statistical correlations they've seen with tropospheric and ground level conditions of the weather temperature, clouds, precipitation, etc. We're looking forward to seeing several of you this Saturday for the Cheyenne event. Last couple days to get tickets here at the link below the video. We greatly appreciate your support. In addition to event tickets, get our books, watch our playlists, book your one-on-one -on -one call with me at the links below in the description box. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.